spoke on the supernatural framework that the Lord has for us, it's in your handout this time. I want to go through it again so that we will set our life on the Lord's, uh, with the view of how the Lord looks at life and how he has set it up for us. Uh, so I call it the seven great miracles that all the time are happening, waiting to happen, working on our life. So he has set our life in a supernatural framework of his own existence and his nature. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created heavens and earth. So the first miracle is that we are here and everything is here supernaturally. Will you say supernaturally? And Hebrews 1, 3 further affirms it. Uh, Hebrews is an epistle that you will learn to read again and again because uh, it has s such a potent summary of God's working from beginning, Old Testament, New Testament, till the end. So Hebrews 1, 3 gives it very well. Jesus, who bring the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and uh, upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Will you say with me, word of his power. Upholding all things by the word of his power. So from the time we are born, every born thing, every created thing, is automatically upheld by the word of his power. If we agree to his existence and if we agree with his power, if we are happy for it, if we are working with his power, we are automatically sustained. We don't even have to depart into sin if the word of his power is part of our daily existence. That's how he has designed us. And we have a thirst for the word of his power. We are Within us, there's a design to accommodate the word of his power. And when we, when we get it, when we receive it into our life, move with it, our life runs on the word of his power. For every need, every situation, body, spirit, and soul can be sustained by the word of his power. Only when we very actively rebel against the word of his power, that things go bad for us. If we just agree... Word of his power will work in our lives, work with us. We just fit into all the things he is doing all the time for our good. Praise the Lord. For instance, when night time comes, you feel sleepy. God gives his beloved sleep. Now that's the word of his power moving into us to give everybody sleep. Word of his power. We are designed like that. The brain chemicals work like that. In fact, there are two kinds of sleep, rapid eye movement sleep and non-rapid eye movement sleep. That is also designed. So one part of our sleep we dream, other part of our sleep we don't dream. Now if we dream too much, that's an error. If we don't dream at all also, that's an error. By the word of his power, he has just designed this into our sleep. And we ought to be waking up if it's normal sleep when it is a non-REM, non-rapid eye movement. We have seen our dreams and then we ought to wake up without dreaming. If you wake up without dreaming, you will feel as if you have not slept. I'm just giving you one complicated example of that. The word of his power has already designed our sleep. So when you wake up in that phase where you ought to wake up, you feel as if you have had a full quarter of sleep. Even if you have slept six hours, I know there must be some who sleep more than that, but even if you have slept six hours and wake up in the REM phase, seeing a dream, so word of, now if we interfere with this, with any kind of tranquilizer, sleep gets upset and you you will sleep because of the drug, but you haven't had the Lord's sleep. So you can't live on tranquilizers for a long period of time. Better not have it at all. Just one example, word of his power. So don't violate your sleep time. Don't just stretch it unnecessary other than for prayer. Uh, because, you know, people do all kinds of things with the night time. Then you should be sleeping. 
Hebrews 11.3 again gives us the miracle of the word of his power by faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So we take it, uh, we, we take it for granted being Christians, we believe, yes, God framed the world by his power. Then we come to the second miracle that the world is also going to end miraculously. It's not going to go on forever and ever. World has a miraculous end. Good news or bad news? I asked this yesterday also. Good news or bad news? World is going to have a miraculous end. A God decreed end. Good news or bad news? Anyway, it's certainly true news. So that we will not we Christians will not be thinking, will it end with an earthquake? Will it end with fire? Will it end with water? Will it end with a flood? We have no worries because it, God has a design, decreed, miraculous end. You find it in 2, Timothy, 2 Peter 3, verse 3. Knowing this, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts. Where is, and what are they saying? Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So you will realize that these are scoffers inside the church. Because they know there was a promise of his coming. And they know church had fathers. But they are saying everything continues without any supernatural in, in intervention. Without any supernatural sustenance. World began and world will just continue. And the world is eternal. That's what they will tend to believe. They become practical atheists. Live as if. Live as if God doesn't directly interfere with the things we do. Then another set of people will say, Oh God, just give that supernatural help needed for me to continue with my, all my earthly programs successfully. I'm not entering into your program. You enter into my program and exactly at that right time, keep this watch. I'm going to send you that SOS at that time only. Just do that miraculous touch and just take your hand off after that. I will carry on as I want to carry on. So many people think miracles are those. Now I'm pitching a framework that our whole existence is miraculous. Simply day by day he holds our breath if he withholds. We wake up not. And the day that the world will end will also be miraculous with Christ coming a second time. And God has his own program set up very precisely what he will do on that day, what he will do after that day. Now this kind of interpretation can begin to make you feel what is our choice then? Your choice and my choice is to work with God who is working supernaturally and we will get a real lift and a momentum to our life. Everything he has for us will be realized. Everything we have for ourselves will not be realized. Good news, bad news. So if we keep on interpreting scripture like this, you will have a conflict in your mind do I agree to this kind of supernatural framework? Or would I say, no, 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 no. SOS supernatural SOS. When I want, I will tell. Otherwise, I want to engineer my life. Now, you will realize many Christians live like that. They engineer their life. And they ask for supernatural help. Exactly on SOS basis for very limited things. And they carry on thinking this is God's program for their life, thinking this is God's program for their children, whereas this is God's pro their program for themselves, into which they are asking God to, on their asking, give some adjustments if we get into trouble. In this time, I am trying to pitch in this series that this is not the way to work with the Lord. This is not the way to walk with the Lord. The way to walk with the Lord is to be held by his everlasting arms, and by the word of his power, wake up. Word of his power carries us through. In our very day-to-day -day nitty gritty affairs, the word of his power carries us through. So today I want to look at the miraculous effect of God's word. If you read it daily and act, if the word of God is living and active, present and able in our lives, 
what a miraculous thing that would be. So the second miracle is this. According to God's design, world will end suddenly. Three, the miracle is the supernatural redemptive history we have. God came in human form. Everything about the first coming of Christ is supernatural. His incarnation, the proof of his deity, his crucifixion, resurrection, ascension. Supernatural. And by being born again, we enter that supernatural world. You say, Amen, Helen. By being born again, it's just waiting to happen to us. We enter into this kingdom that is already at work. Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born of water and of the spirit, he can't enter. So moment, enter into the kingdom of God. Moment we are born again, it is our birthright. We immediately move into what God is doing. That's what our born again experience did for that. Did for us. We entered into God working. Into our lives, he takes over. So when the Lord Jesus Christ said, John 10, 17, I have power to lay down my life. I have power to take it up again. And he, his pure spirit went into Hades, defeated the power of death, defeated the power of sin, took the keys of Hades and death, and rose. And he came back to take up that risen life in his church, in every one of us. So our born again experience produces another miracle, the church, which is a miracle. So the Lord Jesus Christ takes us, takes up his life in us, that he might live his life. Now we also come to a dark night of the soul, like Peter who did not caught anything, and in some moment that dark night of our soul came for whatever reason, and we wanted a change. Our strength failed. And then at that point, we said, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus came. Now, we asked him to come, for him to come and help us to get on with our life. He has come into our life to get on with his life. I'll repeat it. We asked him to come into our life because we needed him. We said it in many tearful, humble tones. We meant it. We said, please come and help me to get on with my life. But his offer was, I will come into your life and take up my life. That is, his life. And very soon we find what did Jesus come in for? He came in as the Lord. He came in as the master. He came in as the shepherd. He came in as the great friend, greatest friend. What for? Take up his life. It's a very simple thing. But I think we constantly go on trying to get him to do our life. Our ambitions, our expectations, what we have for our children, our career. We keep asking supernatural help for those things, don't we? And then he says, son, daughter, I have come to live my life. I am Lord. I am master. Have you felt this conflict? All spiritual movements knew about the conflict. So when the Methodist movement got, born, got birthed and moved, John Wesley preached, just shall live by faith. Though it happened to him, his heart was strangely warm. He understood it's not his piety, it's not his education. Christ was born in him. And they recognized having been born again, they called it an experience of entire sanctification. So they had a Salvation Army followed, uh, First Baptist followed and holiness movement people followed. These are historical movements. They had a sinner's bench and a 
bench for saints, bench meaning a wooden thing and a kneeler, where some will come and kneel at the sinner's bench. They repent and accept the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time. Other set of people will come and kneel at the saint's bench, saying they are breaking through their self-life ceases. Sometimes they pray through the night and they wake up, they, they get up shouting, hallelujah, I broke through. Their language was broke through. Broke through what? From myself into all that Christ has for us. So they were aware of this conflict. What is the conflict? We said, Jesus, come and help us supernaturally when we ask you to get on with our life. And Jesus came in on his terms to finish us. It is finished that he may begin. Struggles, finished. Sin, finished. Self, finished. My earthly program, finished. He wants to take up his life. So this conflict goes on sometimes in the Christian till Jesus comes for a long time. So the Christian is not making any progress because same problems come every day. The problem you had one year ago has returned. Mera returns again. Then some other bad thing returns again. Because our history has not written his story. We are repeating the same thing. I did this study. We are doing what the Israelites did for 40 years. They went around the same place. Same problem, same disappointment, same anger reactions, same uh, inner healing we need again and again. This is because we have said, Lord, help me to live my life. Sounds a good prayer. But it's not what Christ came for. Christ came to our life to live his life. I will take up my life in you. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ who lives in me. Galatians 2, 20. All things are passed away. All things have become new. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I am not preaching a new doctrine. It clearly came to me, these struggles are because we are still asking the supernatural in those needed doses on the basis of our asking. But the Lord says, let your life be totally supernatural. I will take you in my program for your promotion, for your sustenance, for your livelihood, for your family, the best the best proposition for your life, I have. I will work it out. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I will work it out. I will work it out. He tells us this 101 times a day. But every hour, our flesh, our soul, reactions, anger, disappointment, fighting with people we know, Same problems return. Same misunderstandings return. It is time we transition and ask the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus, please live your life in me. I am tired of trying to live my life. I am tired of trying to get you to make adjustments to my life. I surrender. Please live your life in me. Please, I agree to this. After many struggles, I realize just a supernatural help here and there is not enough. You come and live your life in me. So 1 Peter has this uh, uh, wonderful uh, little explanation. 1 Peter 1, 23. S having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. First miracle, creation. Second miracle, creation. Uh, second miracle, second coming. We are in a time frame. First miracle, creation. 
when second coming happens, the whole earth will change miraculously in a way we can't even fathom. So by some of the book of Revelation is difficult to understand. How can this naturally be? Obviously, some things are natural, some things are not natural. But we know there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth, a complete transformation. Our bodies will also change, but we will be with Jesus. That's an eschatological, miraculous thing. Three, our the entire salvation plan of the Lord Jesus Christ is a miracle. That miracle lives in me now. I get in touch with that miracle when I'm born again. Miracle, 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 born again experience is a total miracle. Whoever preaches, uh, whatever our repentance is, what happens is miracle. We never want to forget it. It's a miracle. Being born again is a miracle. Man can't do it. We couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. God did it. Fourth one is the miracle of born again. Fifth one miracle of the word of God. Now see, having been born again, in our born again experience, also the word of God is involved. 1 Peter 1 23, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God. So somehow God genetics and the word completely changes every seed in us when we are born again. Every seed that could produce corruption, corrupt fruit, is transformed incorruptible. I'll read 1 Peter 1 23 again. Having been born again, shall we say born again? Not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God. So the word we heard. We, we, the word we read at that time, some in some miraculous living and active way, will you say living and active? Because Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is living and active. Pierces through between the soul and the spirit. When we are first hearing the word of God and we are hearing the word of, again, word of God again, the word of God pierces through between soul and Spirit gets into the spirit and gets the spirit alive and deals the death blow to all soul. Happen when we are born again. Needs to happen every day. If not, if word of God is not living and active and doing this piercing soaring thing, we will return to our old ways. In fact, we do. Because the word of God is not living and active. It has receded into a distant part. We are listening to different, different things. We are not hearing his word by his spirit, by reading his word carefully. There is not only a mirror living and active. So every morning I need to read the word till it becomes living and active inside all my seeds. I have many kinds of seeds. I have seeds for my progeny. I have seeds for my economy, my livelihood. I have seeds for my relationships, the very necessary relationships. I have different kinds of seeds. Every one of those seeds inside me must come into touch with the living and active word of God. How many times a week? Every day. A vital hour of word action on my seeds. Don't have false hopes on your seed. They were once corruptible. They will return to corruption. What prevents it? What preserves? The same word that preserves the universe. Understood or not? This word daily. Getting inside my seeds. Seeds produce fruit. Seeds produce fruit. Fruit in every area of my life. The fruit I need. The fruit I need comes from the seed inside me. And the seed inside me has undergone sin and iniquity. 
in sin my mother conceived me. Psalm 51, 6. Sin got into me as I was being born. Little fellows, two, three, four, no! Sin is coming out of the every pore, isn't it? These little fellows to whom we gave milk, they couldn't say anything. But by their second and third years, they are saying many things. You can clearly see that. These seeds need the watering, the cleansing, and the living and active word. I can tell you this. The length of our life and the secret of our life has been we get God's word as much as possible to be living and active in all our seeds. Seeds produce fruit. Good seeds produce good fruit. No other way. I have found no other way. I'm now a Christian for 41 years. I have found no other way to keep my fruit all right. Even the fruit of our mouth. Even the thoughts I think about people I don't like. There's no other way. The word of God, living and active. I have found the word of God a safe friend, a miraculous friend. The moment I start reading the word of God in the morning, I don't want to get up till the word of God has lived and acted with all my thoughts, all my burdens, all my needs, all my day's activity, all what I have to do. I want the word of God to be living and active in all my seeds. Did you understand this? There is a life like that. There is a need like that. I know many of you run to office without reading the word of God. Well, we'll overcome you. Your own nature will overcome you. Please don't have any false conceptions about your own goodness. You are as fallen as I am. We have how fallen? 